Hi everybody, this is Daria. Welcome back to my channel, Motley Reads. Um, now, as you can see, I'm back. Uh, I'm back in Sweden, uh, and um, I'm filming a second video out of four uh, about Egil's saga uh, for Saga Long uh, 2022. Uh, now, uh, this video is split in two parts. The first part, I'm just, go just going to briefly give you my thoughts about the about the uh, you know second part of Saga. That uh, that I read uh, during the previous week, and then uh, and then the second part of video uh, is uh, is some bonus material. I'll just uh, just uh, uh, tell you tell you about that. Okay, so now uh, you know first part of saga was uh, was uh, uh, set in Norway. It was very much about the formation of Norwegian state. Uh, it is very much about the King Harald about the. Uh, ancestors of Egil. Uh, we in the first part we didn't yet meet Egil, uh, who is the main protagonist of, of Saga. Now in the second part, Egil is born. Egil is born in Iceland uh, after his ancestors uh, exiled from Norway, uh, fled from from a tyranny, tyranny of of, of uh, King Harald and settled settled a colony there. So Egil is born there, and and um, Egil comes across as a as a very very uh, at least to me. Uh, unsympathetic, a savage character. He he grows up, you know, already at, at the age of three. He is uh, he is already talking as an adult, uh, you know, uh, writing po poetry. Uh, at age of seven, he commits his first murder, uh, and then and then you know it goes on that theme. It is it is uh, as we would say. Uh, it, it's it's you know full blooded psychopath, uh, the Egil, uh, completely you know reckless, uh, murderous bandit. Uh, so 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 that's you know and and in this story he's growing up he's getting out on these on the on the Viking raids uh, quite early and start you know pillaging and murdering uh, around uh, around uh, around the Nordics. Um, basically, you know. Uh, uh, pillaging every uh, estate, every village, uh, anything that is not inhabited by the associates of the of the of the clan that he's a part of, you know, uh, he is getting on uh, together with you know other, other Vikings. It is you know uh, along the along the shores of Sweden, Denmark. They are going over the, uh, over Balticum to to uh, to Latvia, uh, and and you know and this goes on. It gives quite interesting perspective on uh, on the vikings uh because you know vikings are very often uh you know depicted as a as a uh, you know doing you know these types of of deeds like you know they did back in in uh, it was i think it was uh, uh was it 693 or 793 when they when they attacked lindesfarne I think it's 793. Lindisfarne, the monastery in, in northern Scotland, with you know the, the beginning of the Viking Age, uh, in you know in in uh, in, uh, uh, in modern uh, culture, uh, and and you know uh, the story about Vikings, you know, getting uh, you know uh, being uh, uh, being across all, across all over the Europe, uh, being you know these guys who are who are pillaging all all the places around the Europe, and then. The, the picture of them is uh, uh, somewhat rehabilitated, you know, over the years by you know depicting them more as a tradesman, in addition of you know to being you know behaving like a bandits. Now in this saga, you know, trade trade is mentioned as well as in a, as a kind of background, as a kind of alternative of, of you know while making it a trip, way making a trip, you can do a trade trip or you can do a Viking trip. And it's more of these Viking trips. And what's quite interesting is that you know they are not just moving abroad in in you know far away lands like 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 England or France or whatever to do all these dirty things. They're doing it you know to their neighbors, to everybody. So so these guys are you know full bandits, that, that full on bandits, and it it, it gives you quite um, quite interesting perspective because you know when you. At least from 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 the Scandinavia perspective, when you, when you see that and think about you know them 
them uh, being, for instance, you know, in, in Russia, coming to the kingdom of Kiev, uh, you know, settling the colonies there, you know, fighting the inhabitants there, pillaging, the trading, doing all that kind of stuff, going to Constantinople, going to France, going to England. You get kind of, you know, from a Scandinavian perspective, okay, you know, they, they are kind of, you know, conquerors uh, whose names are echoing through, through history and so on. But when you read the saga and see what they've been doing, exactly the same things here, then you realize that it's a bunch of bandits that moved their franchise into international scale and then became conquerors instead of being bandits. Uh, so, 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 that, so that's quite. It gives you quite an interesting perspective. So, so we are following Egil, and and you know he's uh, he's doing all all of these things uh, uh, locally uh, in the Nordics, and then at one point you know he moves his operation in England, and um, in England. Uh, uh, it, it's a very, very interesting section uh, uh, about the about the battle where Egil and his brother are participating on the English side, where English are fighting a, an alliance of uh, Scots and Irish, um, uh, and they are, they, are, they are on the on the England side there. It is uh, very, very interesting showing you know the the, the all the. Things that are happening before this battle, showing about all the negotiations back and forward, you know, bef before the battle starts on the battlefield, you know, how they are trying to negotiate, uh, you know, kind of a you know peaceful solution to to you know whatever dispute they they they, you know, they had there in the beginning before before all this started. And, you know, things are getting a bit hopeful, but still you feel you know this tension here. Um, uh, uh, very much like the, like like this thing we've been experiencing now between between Russia and Ukraine just before the, before the the, the 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 war started, L lots of tension and then it says bam, and and um, it was you know and and then the battle is described in a in a lot of detail, you know how is it executed, you know different waves, uh, tactics and so on, and and the, in that battle the side where Egil participated, the English side was victorious. Uh, and and uh, and uh, you know uh, by end of that battle you know this this section that we read now um, uh, is is finalized. And I was very very curious about this battle. And it turns out that this battle is actually a battle of of uh, of Brunanburg, uh, that we you know his, uh, historically very very important battle that was fought in year nine nine thirty seven between um, Etherstan. Uh, King of England and the alliance of of uh, of uh, Scottish and and Irish kings, uh, the the Nordic mercenaries were reportedly participate or, or participated on both sides, and in this battle, uh, Ethelstan uh, uh, he won. He preserved unity of England uh, that that you know uh, that was threatened by by uh, uh, by, by the. Uh, his opponents from 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 uh, from the northern parts. Uh, it is uh, the the place of the, the location of this battle of Brunanburg. Uh, it's still unclear. Uh, they never really found location where this battle was fought. There are lots of historical sources that are talking about uh, this battle, uh, and you know one of these sources is Egil Saga, but there are lots of you know other sources, and. Um, Egil Saga is the source that goes most deeply into the events just bit before the battle in the tactics in the battle. All the other are talking about other things, but 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 Egil Egil Saga is is is, uh, is pretty is alone in 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 talking about this particular aspect um, uh, of a battle. Now it it is you know it is. Uh, impossible to 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 uh, uh, you know uh, either uh, uh, corroborate or or, or falsify uh, what what the saga is saying, uh, but it is more or less historical fact that that this that this battle took place and that 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 it it ended in a way that that the saga is is uh, is depicting. So that's a, it was it was a very very interesting uh, section. So I'm looking very much into into section that is coming now this this uh, this coming week. So now we have come to, to to the end of the first part of this video. Second part of this video it is vaguely related to saga. Just want to give you give you a small present for you that that are, that are really uh, you know uh, watching watching these videos. Um, um, uh, in my previous video, I filmed it in St. James's Park in London. We were in London last week, and, and I also told you that for this video, I'm going to film in the British Museum because I want to show you something. Now, we went to British Museum 
and since it's Easter holiday in London, it was completely impossible to get in without hours of waiting, and I just refused to wait. It, it is, you know, I'm 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 in London very very often. I'm just you know walking and out from British British Museum. I'm quite often often there, and now you know waiting in the queue for it, it would have taken at least an hour. I just didn't want to do that, so I will do it some other time. What I wanted to show you there is a, a quite interesting uh, uh, collection of, of, of artifacts uh, that were uh, found in, uh, in Saton Hu, uh, uh, in, which is in the uh, northeast of uh, England, uh, uh, which is uh, in Saton Hu, they found the grave of a local ch chieftain uh, where it was a, a boat, buried with the, you know lots of grave gifts in that boat and then you know chieftain was buried there and and you know the uh, chieftain he he had a, uh, a very particular type of helmet on his head and and you know an armory and this chieftain his name was uh, it's thought to be a chieftain Raewald. so this is the excavation of that uh and this is uh uh, for the from the it is a period that is just before um, before this this uh, Viking period it's a precursor to that Viking period this uh, we are talking about the mid uh, seventh century something like that uh, and in in that grave in that boat grave it was you know this helmet was found helmet and armor it looks like this and this is then reconstruction of that particular helmet it is it has a elaborate uh, figures that are there and then in, it is in the faces it is like a bird like a body of a bird tail of a bird wings of a bird head of a bird that then transfers into a snake that goes around the around the helmet uh, and then together with that helmet, there were also a number of, you know, shields with, you know, these birds there. And um, uh, this is, uh, this is a, a, a quite a spectacular find, you know, they, they, some people are calling it, you know, uh, Tutankhamun of, of, uh, of England. Now, what's quite interesting is that, that uh, uh, almost identical find was found in Uppsala, in uh, in uh, just outside Uppsala in in Sweden, and uh, uh, this was also from the same time period, and uh, they found uh, a, a grave, uh, 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 actually fifteen boat graves, and in these boat graves they found the helmets that look something like this, with the bird's body and the wings and the head that goes over into a snake and these ornaments which are uh, same as uh, as in, in a, on, a, on a Saturn Hu helmet and also they found uh, the uh, shields with the same type of ornamentation uh, here uh, it's, uh, which is quite quite interesting from the same period of time uh, and now the, this um, uh, the the, the Saturn Hu uh, was uh, located, as I said, in northwest of England, and Uppsala is, is located uh, north northeast of England. Uppsala is located in the mid east Sweden, and both of these sites were on the periphery of uh, uh, of a, at that point the strongest military power concentration was in in Denmark and north northern Germany. So these two sites are on the, on the, on the periphery. And and uh, and um, uh, typically, you know, the sites that are periphery are very, very, you know, strongly wanting, you know, to 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 show off their power, to show their connection uh, to the to, to the center, and and uh, and you know, we they found you know these two big burial sites with you know with these uh, power demonstrations in the in the in these two two locations, which is quite interesting, and this. Uh, 
in in the in the Nordic history, the the whole this whole period uh, which we're talking about, it's it's a precursor uh, of uh, to, to the Viking Age. It's called the uh, Vendel uh, period, uh, called after the site which is uh, outside of Uppsala. It's called Vendel. Uh, where, where these uh, where these uh, uh, artifacts uh, are found, and and uh, and you know the whole, uh, you know uh, the the cultural and religious uh, uh, complex that 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 was a fundament of a, of a Viking society is coming from that from that period, and this book where I'm showing you these pictures is is this book it's uh, it's only existing in Swedish it's called uh, the Cradle of Viking Age. Um, um, and and also you know Uppsala uh, as a, as a site is is uh, is mentioned in sagas. It's also mentioned for all all, all of you that are following uh, the 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 uh, series of uh, uh, Viking series. I don't know who produced it. Is that like HBO or Showtime or whoever did it? Um, Uppsala is also 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 featured featured there, and I and I uh, also uh, showed uh, showed you Uppsala last year. Uh, I'm going to show you some footage that that, that I took there uh, from uh, uh, Uppsala yesterday, uh, which was meant to be in pair to get together with the British Museum, but I couldn't do British Museum last week, as I, as I, as I said. But what, what are you going to see? You're going to see uh, 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 burial mounds of uh, of um, of a three uh, kings um, uh, from uh, from a period just before uh, this uh, this uh, Vendel uh, period, um, you know, uh, some people were, were talking talking about that in these burial mounds, you know, the, the Norse gods are are, are buried and, and and so on. But but you know, the the, the most the most um, uh, feasible theory is that that you know that specific uh, three kings that are buried there, and the whole burial site there are three burial mounds. And there are lots of small, smaller mounds and graves, about three thousand graves uh, around it, which was basically uh, 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 in Uppsala was was a center of 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 uh, of, uh, of a Norse society um, uh, of that oh, of that time. Um, and um, yeah, so 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 lots of archaeological excavations have been done uh, on that site, and I'm going to show you just uh, some footage from the museum where you're gonna see, you know, these helmets and some artifacts that were that were uh, found there, just as a as a, some extra material to our to our uh, saga um, saga project here. So yeah, hope you enjoyed, and until next time, take care. Bye.